I believe that us honoring our flag and our anthem uh, is part of what binds us together as a nation. And I think that for me, for my family, for those who work in the White House, uh, we recognize what it means to us, but also what it means to the men and women who are fighting on our behalf. Um, but I'm also always trying to remind folks that part of what makes this country special is that we respect people's rights to have a different opinion and to make different decisions about how they want to express their concerns. And the test of our fidelity to our Constitution, to freedom of speech, to our Bill of Rights, is not when it's easy, but when it's hard. We fight sometimes so that people can do things that we disagree with. But that's what freedom means in this country. Nine billion names of pod. From Atlanta. Thank God we're not in Alabama. It's the Nine Billion Names of Pod with Dan Bauman and Michael Reed. I'm Dan Bauman. I'm a boat captain. Do do do. <laughs> so let's talk about some stuff. Ahoy, Dan. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it took me a second to realize where you were going with that. Um, you know what I'm talking about, right? I do, yes. I do now. Uh, okay. We had interesting, interesting events this week with, um, well, we'll start with uh, Hugh Hefner died. Yeah. I uh, mean, 91. That's um, that's a good run yeah. right, for a, for for a, a person, human. For a human. For a human. You know, and just, I mean, I know that he was controversial in a lot of ways but i did a lot of shit came out this week that people... well because people are putting him in historical context and he did in some ways help the cause of sexuality not being so repressed mm -hmm. uh, at the expense of women in my opinion i mean on the on a scale of love hugh hefner fuck hugh hefner um, I'm I'm pegged a little more towards fuck you, Hefner. Hmm. But then again, I didn't grow up in the 50s and 60s when the quote unquote revolution that he did not start, but uh, brought to the forefront and definitely profited from yes. came to fruition. So I have no point of reference, you know, before, but after the war. Yeah. Sexuality. I mean, you, you Other know, than you had watching, a, you had a pinup that was, uh, you know. That was in my locker, and, right? And now we have Playboy. And I mean, we get we have glimpses of that just from the media of the time. How squeaky clean, you know, your your television shows, your your Leave It to Beaver and your I Love Lucy and Leave It to Beaver, so deeply pornographic. Oh, oh, we're <laughs> the other one. Oh, yeah, okay, not that, that one. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you couldn't have Ricky and Lucy in the same bed because you can have any. I don't know. Their their junk might uh, brush up against one another. And then Lucy was, she was never pregnant. She was, she was expecting. Expecting, yeah. Expecting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm expecting a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> a baby's not one of them. Right. But, okay. Do you know who the very first, you probably do, a uh, couple to share a bed on national television was? Uh, prime time national television. Yes. Fred and Wilma. Yes, it was. The Flintstones. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, Dad's Garage Trivia. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so we only, you know, yeah, neither one of us grew up in the 50s, so, but we could see how, you know, and you, you hear about the repression and the, uh, the the squeaky clean, you know, USA, uh, how it all was, and then... Oh, but it, that's what's in the media, trust yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. People yes. didn't suddenly go, oh, sexual revolution? Well, I guess I'm going to get my freak on. Yeah, sex never... was not invented in 1961. Yeah. Right, exactly. Or 55, 55 when, I think it was, no, 53 when Playboy debuted. Oh, was it 50? 53. Wow. Holy moly, guay. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, trust me, you know, you think, there's so many more murders and rapes now. Yeah. No, we just know about them a lot more. And the cops have just started beating up and harassing no. and killing. No, no. It's social media. It's, yeah. it's, it gets out 
in one second as opposed to you right. know a couple of weeks or or is sanitized by the powers that be right well it went through the corporate media says oh no 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 we're not going to like the reporters would find out oh wow you know kennedy's in there you know banging whoever but we're not going to report that yeah we can't report there is that. no reporter now said no no we're gonna we're, gonna, we're not going to do that for the good of the yeah. country yeah they'd be like oh, get me absolutely to that's the first. what they want exactly so the fact that you know we think that the society is going to hell in a handbasket. No, it's been in that handbasket since I'm going to say probably uh, we come up out of the ooze and yeah. started breathing on land. Look at you know ancient Rome was the most decadent society. Caligula, my boy. No, I, <laughs> no, no, no. you know, and that's the thing. It's they always say the uh, the homosexual revolution it's just there have always been homosexuals yes since the beginning of but time. now they're not going to take your repressive bullshit anymore right they're, they're not tired gonna, of they're not going to hide and they're not yeah. going and, to feel they shouldn't have to exactly they're not going to feel guilty about it you know and well to swing it back around you know hefner was he was a champion of that as well he was kind of on the side that's what i've read of of uh Pro homes, not repressing homosexuality. Oh, uh, that I could not say. He was, however, not in support of, of the feminist movement. He said it was a lot of a waste of time. But then, on the other hand, he was very supportive of civil rights. You know, yes. in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, guess what? Hef was like every other person on the planet. He could be a total asshole. And he could do good things. Yeah. You know, Hef's like me, like you, like everybody. It's <laughs> just, just the... more magnified. Exactly. It? Oh, but trust me, if everybody could go online and find out every little foible of everybody on the planet, uh, well, which we can in, to some degree now. Yeah, with social now we media. can, yeah. But then again, that's that's self, um, you know, self-exposure, if you'll pardon the phrase. Right. You know, I make a point to never put anything on social media that I would have any problem with a stranger. I mean, I don't share my page publicly, mm -hmm. but I don't um, I don't put anything on there. That's just for, you know, I don't want anyone else finding out about it. Yeah, it, it's you know, I put it out. Well, it's there. just smart it because ne literally well, they can, because people who would reply back. I only care about the opinions of the people I know and my friends. Yeah. If I made it public, I'd hear from, you know, dumb shit asshole or on in, in Peoria, Illinois. Right. Be like, I don't care what you think. Right. I honestly don't. And, you know, 20 years ago, I would never have a way of knowing what you think. And also, I mean, literally, once you put something online, it never goes away. Right. There's just layers of of difficulty in getting to it yeah you know you know if you're just a regular schmo like us who goes through life and then dies if someone wants to find out what you thought about you know trump's election you might be able to dig it up yeah. maybe but, but i mean if you a, put a, a picture little... of yourself up there is a 99.9 percent .9 chance it'll be up forever you know it might disappear yeah. after a while but if people want to find it right well you know you know what they've done in germany hmm they have a rule uh, that's, uh, I can't remember the, the exact German phrase, but it roughly trans in, uh, translates into the right to be forgotten. In that, in Germany, you can contact Google and say, hey, I don't like this picture of me. I don't like this news report about me. Take it out of your search results. And they have to do it. Hmm. They have the right to do that. Interesting. Google fought hard against it yeah they lost hmm. so now in germany you can do that over here <laughs> never no, no no it's it's there for everyone to see and trust me some of the some of the lame ridiculous and sometimes pretty awesome but borderline criminal stuff i did in my teenage years mm -hmm. if social media had been around yeah yeah that'd be you know yeah girl go, yeah i'll go out with you well, you know, we'll go out on uh, Saturday, Friday night. She's at home going, oh, dear God, he did what? Oh, my God, he did what? No, nope, canceled the date. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You well, know. that's how that's the culture nowadays. Right. People... I mean, I don't know if I would think that uh, if I think that the Google rule should be done here. But I think that when you hit the age of 25, you should be able to erase 25 back one time. Just, you know expunge your record <laughs> seriously because uh, you know i didn't really get my head together in a meaningful way that i can go that's that's when i 
that's when I got my head together. About 25, 24, 25. <sighs> You know, yeah, lucky they, you. I, you know, I'm still figuring. You're it still out. working on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, there were degrees <laughs> up to that point, but you know, there were little realizations and little life experiences. And by the time I hit 25, I was like, "Wow, I was a total dick to that girl." Or, "Wow, oh yeah, I was." I did oh well, not... that's for sure. I have regrets. It's yeah, like, "Wow, why the fuck did I do that?" Right. And at least in my case, those horrible things are only known between me and her and perhaps a small group of our friends. They're not immortalized digitally yeah. forever. Yeah. And of course, in the case of Hugh Hefner, pretty much as soon as he started putting out that smut with the boobies, mm -hmm. because we all know that, you know... That was the downfall of the, civilization. The, exactly. <laughs> once, the, once, once man saw boobs yep. and they weren't his wives... It made baby Jesus cry, and that and that just flooded the whole world, right. you know the zeitgeist. <laughs> uh, um, you know some of the stories that have come out lately about the the strict rules. Yeah, Hefflin, the whole Svengali aspect. You of, know, I see. I'm kind of torn on that. I understand. It's not like he tied them up, brought them to the Playboy Mansion, yeah. and said, "You're my sex slave." They went into it voluntarily. And I, I, that's why I, I get it. I get the my house, my rules thing. But they were not prisoners, <sighs> and they were there for their own agenda of fame and fortune. And yeah, and, and and it's hard to put myself in anyone else's shoes with any degree of accuracy. Right. I just think he could have been less of a dick. Oh, I agree about it. I, I agree. You know. But power like that corrupts, and oh, yeah. you know if and you, you build yourself a sex palace, yeah, and you, you know. and you have people who will acquiesce to that, and you know, and go along with yeah. that crazy shit. It, he it's married, hard to not go along with. It's like that. he married like some girl in her thirties in his nineties. Yeah, you know, and the stories come out. Yeah, he would just lie there with his Viagra heart on. I'd hop on for three minutes, and that was it. I'm like. Uh, that's kind of horrible, but you... You know what? But what goes on between two consenting adults? It's not like he forced her at gunpoint to do it. That's what I mean. That's why I, I have know. a... I, you know, and again, I'm not... I don't... I'm not... I'm not on his side on the whole thing, but I, I don't understand if it was that terrible why they why these women stayed. It, 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 it's a trade-off. It is a trade-off. They it, were it, there it, for it, their own It is very similar well. to... God, I hate this job. I want that paycheck. Yeah. So you do exactly. It. I want to be case, famous. They wanted to live at the mansion. They wanted the lifestyle. And occasionally uh, they had to fuck a corpse. Yeah. Essentially, and you know? I, you know what? I that doesn't I, make it right. I judge, but I don't judge. Yeah, you know? absolutely. In my head, I'm judging out loud. No, you're a you're a sentient human being. Yeah, You could have left with your own agency. You do whatever you want. Right. Right. And it just, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know fuck you Hefner things going around on Facebook right. and I read it and you know what? I agree with him more than I don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, he's not a criminal. He's just, you know, he's just kind of, he contributed stuff to the opening up of sex and society, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, Released but, some of the repression. Of, well, at least the public face. Yeah. You know, I look at it as, you know, Oh, they have such a perfect marriage. And then you, spend an evening with them in their home and you find out it is absolute hell there. Yeah. But when they leave the house, they are the power couple that everyone loves. There's the public face and then there's the private face. And some of these former bunnies would say, yeah, well, have said, you know, when you're living at the mansion, you can never have men over ever. Okay. Right. You know, you can't do this. You have to keep this. You blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, ah. that's shitty, but it is, if, if you didn't, if they wanted to live there, you, I know. You know, it, it's. It, I'm very tender about the not tender. How how is that raw about you know how women get treated generally even today. Of course, and, and today is far better than it used to be. Of course, yeah. So, you know, I don't know what the dynamic was in the '70s when Playboy was at its height. You know, pre, yeah. just before the internet, ten years before the internet, Playboy was selling. You're like seven million copies exactly. per issue because no one had any, you know, not a lot of people were going to run off to the local peep show or the, you know, Pee Wee well, Herman I mean. like spank they, your meat theater. Yeah, the, it's not like Hef invented porn. 
Oh dear God, no! You know, since they were, I, I think some cave drawings with yeah. you know, like, my gosh, he looks like he stands about five foot ten, and his phallus is about thirty feet long. <laughs> Why would you draw that? Did that happen? You know, I've I read somewhere that every advancement in uh, like entertainment technology. Oh, it's co opted by porn immediately. Well, if not like spurred on by porn. They said the first pornographic film came within months. Of the first film, of the first film, yeah, of the train, and, yeah, and I don't, uh, I don't doubt it at I all. I don't doubt that at all, right? You know, the internet, you know, porn, VHS, basically. I mean, yeah. watch, watch Boogie Nights. You know, it just took porn out of the theaters where you had to kind of show yourself in public, and you know, now you brought it home where it's like, holy crap! Yeah, now that can... was that was a revolution. Yeah, you know, because people were so ashamed of you know their own well, sexual desires. It's like, I'll do it at home. I'll do it very quietly. And to go to a you know not for nothing, but to go to a gnarly yeah. film theater and to have to do that. You know, just to to get off is is a, is horrendous. That's the thing I cannot even get my head around. Wow! First of all, I would never even want to sit down anywhere. No. <laughs> I mean, no. I just you know, but you know, that's what there's a show on HBO right now called The Deuce about basically the beginning of mainstreaming of uh, pornographic films. Oh, is that what that's about? Yeah, uh. yeah. Yeah, no, it's not scatological documentary. Oh, I... I you get with the, uh, no? no? No, okay. No. Uh, yeah, it was with Maggie Gyllenhaal in it. has a main role. And um, uh, Franco, what's his name? Uh, James? James Franco, yeah. Really? Playing two roles. Identical twins. Eh, it's, so, that's a thing for him. It's interesting. It's HBO. It has a very um, Scorsese feel to it. I don't think he's involved, but it has a Scorsese feel to it. Hmm. You know, it's... It's New York in the 70s, so automatically my mind goes straight to Scorsese. Because, or Cassavetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, for me, it's Scorsese. Yeah. For me, it's Scorsese. You grew up there, yeah. so you have a much, you know, much... That, that's my, that's my, my standard joke. It's like, if you want to see where I... Like, you go to New York now, and it's like Disney, and it's clean, and it's safe, and it's all... You want to see where I grew up, watch Serpico. You know, <laughs> watch The French Connection. There you go. Literally, that's the, where I grew up, you know, dirty and graffiti and everything. But... Oh, yeah. Times Square, where, you Ooh, know... Times Square, we were in allowed to go there as you know young you, you know if we did we would go through it very quickly with our heads down you know <laughs> not anymore last time last time i was there had had a nice lunch next to i think like a disney store or something oh like yeah, that. yeah they, yeah, the just, entire, they bought know, all of times square which can there be a happy medium between you know hand jobs a plenty just down the road and corporification can we you and know sanitize yeah can yeah. we just have have we you know like local owned businesses that are not not porn you know or eh, I don't know. Yeah, it's a th- <laughs> hear me talking about. You know, I love New York. Every time I've been there, I've loved it. I mean, yeah. there's a part of me that still has a tiny regret that I settled in Atlanta because every time I've been there, like, gosh, I could uh, I could do something in New York, man. I love New York, but it takes a certain a certain type of person to thrive in New York. You can't. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're, I you're not going to come out of you know corn fed Iowa, jump jump on a Greyhound, deposit yourself in New York, and be like, I'm home. Usually. Usually. I mean, sure there have been, but it's a tough... I mean, if you're there for a specific thing like Broadway or for school or whatever... Right. You would... Some kind of industry. Right. Like that, but, yeah. I mean, for me, I was just, you know, I'm not going on Broadway. I just love the city. Yeah. I think it's, think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's also one of the top, what, three, four, five most expensive places to live. Especially now. In... Like, I, you know, Courtney's always like, oh, I, I, we should move to New York. I was like, we couldn't afford to live in New York yeah. at all. I don't know how my friends who live there do it i really don't yeah you know what if you had never left you would have found a way well it just would have been cumulative i would have been in the uh, in the pot in the pot i've been earning uh, you know proportionate to the cost of living right right whereas here you know i earn substantially less than than my friends in new york but the cost of living is substantially less so it's all same thing with me with san diego yeah I mean, I was out here for a year, and I got a job offer back there, and I considered moving back. I didn't take the job offer, but while I was out there, I reacquainted myself with the prices of things out there. I went, wow. Yeah. I could live maybe kind of okay in California if I moved back or live very well with what I'm doing out here. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Atlanta, no problem. Yeah, Aside nothing. the fact that so many great bands skip Atlanta – yeah fuckers yeah it's it's growing i mean it's the cost of living is definitely going up um, well it's going up every it's going up everywhere right 
Right. So that's why I'm glad I got my house when I did, mm -hmm. because now I'm immune from price from housing price increases. Right. But then again, you know, my parents were immune from when they bought in the 60s. Yeah, and of course. you'll be immune when you buy when you buy. Yeah. It's just, you know, you, you lock in at a certain point and then that's your. And the rest of the world goes around. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the time by the time I die, my place will be worth 10 times as much. Well, you die 10 times as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway, anyway. What are we talking about again? Oh, the boobies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, um, somewhat liberating for women, but mostly not. I don't know. And there's a reason why, you know, um, they put up, you know, he put up the, the Playboy Mansion for sale. A couple years ago. A couple ago, years yeah. ago. And it, he put it up for $2 million. I think it sold for $1 mil, uh, excuse me, for $100 million to his next-door neighbor. Well, his and the stipulation was he had to and, still live there. Right. He, 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 he wasn't going anywhere. Right. You, you can own it, but nothing changes until I die. Yeah. So if, if the guy who bought it, if he's smart, turned it into a tourist attraction. I mean, from what I understand, it's, you know, lavishly... Appointed and the everything. famous grotto. And yeah, the, you know, you could. It's got a freaking zoo in it, and you know all that. It, some of that, I think, is some of the '70s excesses. That oh, of he, course, that he kept going because you know I can't downsize at all. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the and of course Playboy is nowhere near the powerhouse it once was. Well, no, it they got... even they even went to no nude girls in the magazine for a moment, and they then tried they it. Yeah, and then they realized. What are we doing? And they brought the nude girls back. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. I've seen, you know, even back in the day, some of the Playboy Center for very tame stuff by comparison. Oh, to, completely. To that, well, that's know. the problem. They got they got aced out by everything else. I right. mean, it did it. Playboy did its thing, and it was it, it was the top of the heap for a long time. But once you know, once you get into, once you get that first taste, well, once then you, you want to get into anal fisting gang bangs. Right. And you're once not you get into get hustler that, and, yeah. and all that stuff, and it gets all you know as graphic as you can possibly get. Yeah. You know, Playboy seems quaint. Quaint, exactly, exactly. And Which, yeah, I, I can see the people that were outraged about Playboy's debut twenty years later, looking back, going. Can we just go back to everything being like the Playboy was? Because it's getting really bad now. Yeah. I mean, to people who are offended by, you know, sex and human sexuality, you know, the the road from Playboy to where we are now, ouch. You know. Oh, yeah. That hurts. Although for for most people, I guess in our peer group, it's like, you know. I'm, I'm not looking to, you know, do stuff out in public and get that freaky. But, hey, if you want to do what you do, do your thing. That's yeah. that that, that, that kind of lends itself to our attitude on, you know, um, uh, gay rights and transgender rights and stuff like that. It's just rights They're, for people. It's, it's people, what they do sexually, unless they're inviting us in, to like, would you like to join us? That offer has never happened. No. And who cares? Yeah. I've I mean, always I said, mean, I mean, my, my, my joke about that has always been, uh, you know, people, it, people who complain about, you know, what gay people do in the bedrooms. I, I don't want to know what my straight friends do exactly. in the bedroom. That's exactly. none of my business. <laughs> I don't, I don't meet a new couple and think, I know what they do in the bedroom. Yeah. It doesn't go through your head. Why no. should it go through your head with, with anybody else? That... I mean, that's the problem. Because if it is going through your head. Uh, well, that's on know, that's on you. That's on them. That's on the people who. That's what I mean. That's I mean, on if it goes through your head, that's on you. That's, that's on not, you. It's for, not their problem. Yeah. The people who like rail against it. It's like, why are you so hung up on yeah, it? Yeah. It's like. Are, did, the, did you you're get, the one with the problem. Did you get left? Did you get left out of the uh, you know the uh, frat boy gangbang that you wanted to be a part of, and you're bitter because, or you just never got laid at all? Uh, yeah, exactly. That, you know, that's like, what it is. God, even guys are having sex with guys, and I still haven't touched a woman. Right. You know. So I'm Roy Moore. Roy Moore. Oh. The shitbag in Alabama that. Uh, oh, 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 oh. The one that just embarrassed the crap out of Trump. Basically, yes, yes, yes. The, the, the extreme, tweet. the extreme right wing of of the Republican Party uh, was all for Roy Moore. This is the guy that put the Ten Commandments mo uh, monument in on the grounds of the uh, Huntsville. I want to say, uh, the, or was it Birmingham? Uh, probably Birmingham. He was with the, with the state supreme court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got uh, he defied. He said, "You can't have that. Get rid of it." He wouldn't, so they they threw him off the bench. Yeah. Then he got voted back in by the people of Alabama. Wow. And he got thrown off again because he was telling all the lower um, lower court judges, 
don't issue marriage licenses to those gays. Yeah. Don't do it. Yep. So they pulled him off the bench again. Now he's like, I see what happens. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and become a senator. And he was um, running in the primary against Luther Strange, which sounds like a fucking Bond villain. Or a comic book character. Oh, my God, Luther Strange. And the fact that he's like six feet nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Luther. You know, this this tall white guy that just has this incredible villain name. He was the establishment choice that okay. Mitch McConnell and everyone loved. And Trump was uh, st- you know stomping for him. He did a couple rallies down there. And uh, he got his ass handed to him by double digits by rootin' tootin' Roy Moore. Really? You know, this is the guy that says, you know, these days the blacks and whites are fighting. The reds and the yellows are fighting. The First of all, are you talking about Native Americans and Asians? Yeah. That's racist. And two, they're not fighting. No. I mean, there may be one thing happening that the people happen yes, to be I, i'm sure an asian and a, a native american may have fought at one point but that I'm doesn't mean sh- they sure anytime anytime you use that word they oh, that's of where that's where it all started oh. if someone uses that word in reference to an entire group of course hey whenever i do something everyone goes white people yeah <laughs> damn white people because that happens all the time all the time but as soon as colin kaepernick takes a knee Let's get into that. Yeah. Um, oh, God. <laughs> it's funny. I saw uh, I, a couple of, I don't know if it was tweets or memes or something, but the sentiment was basically the more you fight against the protests, the more protests there are going to be. Well, here's the thing. Colin Kaepernick did it. I think I don't follow it was a few sports months, at it was all. It was a few months ago. Oh, no, no. This was last season. Oh, yeah. And I think he was the only one, maybe a couple He was couple the first, others. for sure. He was, the, he was the poster boy of yeah. it. So when, was it draft? The picking of players yeah. or whatever, he didn't get a team. No, he's still not. The owners he's went, still not hired. He will be. Yeah. I, I have a feeling he will be. But he wasn't, you know, and all their concern is, see what happens when you disrespect the flag? And like, I'm sorry. How are you disrespecting the flag? Yeah. I, I don't get that. You do understand that just the playing of the national anthem at sports uh, at sports events, that's a rather recent phenomenon instigated by uh, the military to up recruitment. Yeah, and that's, the NFL that's, paid them to participate in it. Exactly. That. It's not something like, we've had in God we trust in our money since the early... No, no, it was the 50s Yeah, because of communism. And we didn't have God on there before then. Now, Trump put his uh, his ulcered sphincter into the fight, and you know, and condemned the taking of a knee, and everyone, oh, okay, and everyone's doing it now. Yeah, I mean, owners are the owners that have been supporters of Trump are there taking a knee with their with the their rest of their players. team. Yeah. Well, again, <sighs> Trump is acting as if the people of America are his employees. You know, fire that son of a bitch. That's not how it works, no. you idiot. No. You are not. You are. You work for us, technically. But Dan, don't you know that all the people in the military over the years they fought and died for our our right to demand that everyone stand and put their hand over their heart for the for the pledge of allegiance and for the uh, mm-hmm. for the American anthem and all that other kind of stuff. Oh, right. They did that for our right to do it or not do it. Yes. Because that's the definition of what's that F word I loved? Oh, freedom. I saw a couple of tweets that uh, from uh, said, like, I'm a, I'm a World War II veteran. And if you think that I went to uh, another country and almost died so that these uh, the, so that these fucking millionaires can uh, can take a knee and protest this country, you're goddamn right. I did. <laughs> Absolutely. You're goddamn right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, I, I had just, a yeah. I have a, a friend who's somewhat right wing, and we go back and forth now and again. And where does he stand on this whole thing? He's he's. It's funny. He's still sticking to the right, but I know that he is not a Trump supporter, no matter what he says. Uh, but he he's with the guy who will who will bring up the NFL rule book and 
to like say, well, they should have, you know, the the rules say that they have to state and they have to stand, they have to do all this stuff, and I and I would no, it doesn't. It, he pulled up some, some does it? It, it did well, at that's, some. That's point. news to me. But he pulled it up, and then my response was just, that's what qualifies it as a protest, not doing what they are told to do. <laughs> well, hey, remember what happened? Uh, you know, the bus driver went back to Rosa Parks and showed her the book the rules and she said oh i'm sorry i'll move to the back of the bus right fuck no she did somebody uh, i saw someone on facebook uh i think it was a, an actress um it was in one of our, our circle and it was a t- an actress how dare she voice her opinion right she has fame and money so therefore she doesn't get her free speech <laughs> no she was a local actress i think but the her t-shirt, even less free speech her, for t- her. <laughs> her t-shirt was it just was a quote and it just said nah Rosa Parks. <laughs> oh, that sounds like um, that's okay. I think I, I think I know. Yeah, I, just, I think I, I know who that is. I saw that. I don't want to like, name check her on, that's on the brilliant. I don't remember the name, but I saw I remember the teacher. Nah. <laughs> nah. And of course, there's the meme that has uh, there's a famous painting of Rosa Parks sitting on the bus and someone has photoshopped uh, Kaepernick in the seat behind her taking mm-hmm. a knee. And I'm like, you know what? I mean. In historical context, maybe we will look at Kaepernick that way, and you know, you know, because let's face it, Rosa Parks is known just for refusing to give up her seat, right. which is in the scheme of things, you think that's not a big deal. Back then, it was. It was. And I'm sure she was. She was involved in. Well, it the was movement. somewhat orchestrated by. Right. By right. But Dr. I mean, King she was. And... Well, originally, she wasn't the person that was going to. No, it was Do it. It was someone younger. I believe. Yeah. There was an interview with her. There's like I could have been Rosa Parks. Yeah. And like, well, you weren't. hey, look, it happened. You know, it, it's one of those things. Yes, it was somewhat orchestrated, but it was necessary. It did really spark the civil rights movement. Um, so uh, it's not that it's... it was. It was one of the earlier victories of the civil rights movement right. that recruited. I mean, it's the same. It's the Trump effect we're having now. Kaepernick, ah, it's one guy, whatever. Trump mouths off and then all of a sudden owners and teammates and everybody locking arms right taking knee, yeah right now there's i think it was the pittsburgh steelers they they didn't even come out for the anthem they stayed in the locker room wow but one guy who's a former military guy came out mm-hmm. he regretted it later says yeah i kind of threw my teammates under the bus and you know what maybe you did in a way but I support your right to come out and stand and put your hand on yeah. the heart. You know, do it. Knock yeah. yourself out. Yeah, and, especially and, if you're a military. I mean, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's a part of your personal journey. And you're like, you know what? I feel the yeah. need to not having served. I'm not going to tell that guy what to do. Fuck no. How he should how he should handle the situation. Well, hey, come on. We're white males in America. We get to tell well, this guy was white too. But yeah, besides the point, as white males in America, we get to tell people of color how to protest and when to protest. Exactly. It's like, oh, no, 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 Kaepernick, yeah. you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're doing. You're not it. protesting. You know, if, I mean, if a protest had absolutely no effect, if Kaepernick went into like the a shower stall and quietly kneeled for, well, you know, again, no one would know about it and it would mean nothing. Again, look up, yeah, look up the word protest. Yeah. That's what it means. It means exactly. fighting against the rules. Like I said. Well, hey, Republicans can't understand how insurance works. I don't know if they understand or, how protests work. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm, I am a hundred percent kneel, stand on your head, you know, I don't know, jerk off on the 50 yard line. I, you know, I don't know about that particularly. <laughs> That's a little. Uh, that's a little more freedom than. Uh, I'm a, hey, you know, there's consequences. Well, you, you can do it. You'll get arrested. Right. But. There's consequences <laughs> for everything. I mean, free. Sp- the First Amendment only protects you from being uh, shut down by the government. Oh my God, who's leading the government? Uh, well, that's know. the thing. If he would have not said anything about it, would have gone, gone away. Gone away. You know, you know Cap- there would have been a couple of guys a week who did it, and it wouldn't have been a, a thing. Right. Well, Trump's distracting from the fact that I I really think that hopefully sooner than this, but like by next summer, uh, he'll either be impeached, indicted, or will resign in advance, and Pence will will uh, this whole Russian thing is well, not, not to dive all into 
Trump's problems again, but it's just, it's just bad. Yeah, and Mueller is like really like he's not fucking around. He's not fucking around, and he is working. He's trying he, to intimidate. He's uh, not like out on the press like yelling at Trump like I'm gonna come in to get you. He's actually working and going oh, yeah. after him. The the reports of how you know hardcore he's going after it is reports of his actions. He's not going to a press conference going I'm gonna get you. No, he's just doing the job, yes. which is how you're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I I really don't even really ever want to hear from robert mueller until everything's done or yeah. until i want him to just when it's yeah when he has it all he'll just come in and say okay right. you're done i know everyone wants a minute by minute play yeah like, they want the they smoking did, gun they there, did that, they there did. won't be a smoking gun there'll be a there'll be reams of reams of paper that oh, there'll be just a lot of you know evidence a, yeah yeah it's just you know like the uh, uh <laughs> the the hilarious hypocrisy of it all when it was announced that uh, Kushner was using private email servers and as well oh, as Ivanka. Not just him, like most of his cabinet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is different. How? Well, they're not using private servers. Just Okay, so they're cheap and they're not as concerned about security as Hillary was. Right. She had her own server so with its entire own. entire platform. Exactly. Of- her emails and lock her up and how that yeah so everybody did well yeah. d- don't don't forget dan when it <laughs> it's only bad it's only illegal it's only outrageous when a democrat does it of course when a republican does it remember when the democrat remember when the democrats took like a year to get health care through yeah my gosh no time no debates amendments blah, 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 blah. and then they try to twice three times put exactly. put some garbage yeah, through the republicans with are, it like a week yeah while well, the republicans are doing it on the way to school in the on the bus exactly know, like, oh shit reports due today yeah uh, they only had six years enough. to figure it out and yeah instead of just saying repeal and repeal and replace and replace and they just didn't do anything well because they weren't expecting trump to win and all of a sudden yeah you yeah. know it's like uh, <laughs> It's like the guy who talks, you know, like, yeah, man, I'm I'm awesome with the ladies. And you know, he's a virgin. And all of a sudden, a girl goes, all right, let's go for it. And he's like, uh, oh, uh, um, I'm, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this thing. Now. Um, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. I read a um, it was a it was a I-, I couldn't tell if they were trying to attack. It was a it was like the writer or the. um the rules of Hillary's book signing. And it was like, Hmm. oh, yeah, she will not, uh, uh, they will take no selfies, and she will not, you know, there's wristbands, and there's all stuff. And I was like, that's every book signing that's ever been. And, you know, she won't won't personalize. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that because then people, you know, it's it's insane. Yeah. Well, if if on eBay 10,000 books go up with just her signature – it lowers the, the the quote unquote value and the reason for people to do it. If it's specialized, then all of a sudden that raises the value. Yeah. But for any person who is such a quote unquote polarizing figure, I mean, she was a lackluster politician. You know, she's a better administrator than she is a politician. Yeah. But for some reason, on the right, they just hate her so much. And when you're that, well, they were afraid of her. They were afraid she was going to win. Well, but but but. <clears throat> But she's a woman. How can she lead a country? What? 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 Angela Merkel just got her fourth uh, fourth term in Germany. Yeah, Benazir Bhutto and in... <laughs> those are exceptions. Right. Those are exceptions. Yeah, so. every other major country in the world has had I women know. in when power. You, think of the most like you know ass backwards countries you can think of, and most of them have had a woman leader. Yeah, of some yeah of yeah. some kind. <laughs> yeah, prime minister or president or, or chancellor or whatever you want to call it. And but not us. Yeah. And I don't see anybody else on the horizon that has the kind of name recognition and list of accomplishments that that Hillary Clinton does. As much as I hate to say it, I don't know if we're going to see a female president in our lifetime. I don't know. It's not that there aren't other people that are qualified. It's that that culmination of wanting to run, being able to run, having the infrastructure to run name record. I mean, Donald Trump, if he wasn't on celebrity apprentice and just some rich shit bag from, from New York, maybe he wouldn't have won, but right. celebrity apprentice raised up his pro. I'm going to vote for the person on TV. I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You thought you knew that guy. Um, 
I don't, you know, I don't even see a male that has, I mean, there's a couple that. That's, that's my fear right yeah. now is that the Democrats aren't, they don't have anybody coming out who, like, they're not grooming anybody that we can see that's. Well, but that we never really saw the grooming of, well, really, there wasn't any grooming of Barack Obama. True. He had that great speech in, I want to say, 2004 okay. was it i can't remember what it was and then you know he's a first-term senator and all of a sudden boom president yeah that's pretty ballsy yeah turned out to be a damn good president i agree. probably the best in i put him up there with clinton i mean yeah you got a blowjob in the oval office yeah, whoopty, see, the whoopty thing freaking I'm... dude i don't i don't care about that i don't care both of the clintons are kind of despicable people they're not very good people but uh... You know, they're not the, the cleanest. They're politicians, but yeah. they were qualified at their jobs and good at what they did. And that's the difference. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, but he got a blowjob, so therefore we must impeach him. Yeah. You know, I, back I, to the repression of. I, oh, <laughs> well, you, you look at the economic uh, affairs of the country, and when a Democrat's in office, you know, stock market's going great, you know, record employment, you know, everything's great, you know, deficit dropping, Republican gets in the fiscal conservative, and all of a sudden, problems, the markets, crashes, you know, and it's 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 this, almost the same, and the deficit goes through the freaking roof. Yeah. Except for Barack Obama. He got into office and he doubled the debt. Huh, I wonder, what? What happened moments before he took office? <laughs> what, what what could have made him double the debt on? Uh, oh, I don't know, saving the fucking country. Yeah, but we're not gonna we're not gonna remember that part. That yeah. part we're not gonna remember. That's uh, we just remember that he doubled the debt. Right. That's Sean Hannity basically just you know puts his hand down his trousers and just rrr, jerks off every five seconds <laughs> on the air, going, it's you know all this horrible stuff he did like. Yeah, you know why he had to do some of those tough things? Because Bush almost trashed the freaking country. Yeah. Uh, wow, we got on a real political rant here, didn't we? We did. I was did. Uh, trying to steer. A Sorry, little... folks, it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Half boobies, football. <laughs> not. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I fall. I I fall squarely on the side of not only the protests but in support of the cause they're protesting against. Yeah. You get it's not just people think that they're disrespecting the flag or the anthem like no, it has nothing to do with it. Nothing Zero to do with it. It's police brutality against people of color. That's what the protest was. Yeah. And he protested in a way that would be the most visible. If he was an iron worker, Maybe he'd protest in a different way. If he was a, you know, an accountant, maybe he'd protest in another way. Right. But because he's a, you know, he has a platform in which he can get a message out to a lot of people because there's a lot of eyes on him. And that's one of the things that I take great offense. There's a lot of idiots out there and some of them are actors. And when an actor speaks their opinion... I judge it based on what they said, not who they are. Right. I don't want to hear what what fucking... Well, I, I don't agree with that anyway. I mean, why don't actors have the right to voice their opinion? Why don't athletes They do. Have it's just the people on the other side are angry because they have a built-in audience for their message. And when they say something that they don't, well, that's that they don't agree with, though. they put down the person, not the message. Yeah. If, if I get out on the street corner and start, you know, railing against Trump, that's just me and maybe someone will pay attention right. or not. But if I'm an actor and I'm walking the red carpet and I make some comments on the red carpet, that makes news. I'm all I, I wish actors would say it. You know, voice opinions more. And that includes people like, you know, was it John Voight? He's a Republican. He yeah. supports Trump. Say which you know, and he does. He does speak up. He's not high. You know, Kelsey Grammer is a total Republican. Yeah. If you've got something to say, say it, and let's be and let you be judged That's on the merits the of Amendment your of for. your argument, right. right? Not on. Well, you were pretty good on Cheers, so all right, I guess you're made a point. No, fuck yeah. that. That has nothing to do with it. You're, everyone is entitled to their opinion. I just I find it the whole thing completely. The irony of it all of 
the person whose campaign slogan was make America great again is is against the people saying that America isn't good right now. Or that there was a time when it was great. Read between the lines, eh, 1950s before those uppity. Yeah, well, that's, that's that's one interpretation. That's of how it. I, that's how I read it. Yeah, you know there are people out there. Like, I remember when I used to use the N word on the street, and I was cheered for it. It was no problem. Now I can't do it anymore. Right. Well, boo, fucking who yeah, for make you? Make America great again for for white rich, people. White people for yeah. white people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then we got the the tax plan they announced. I'm not going to benefit. <laughs> You're going to benefit a yeah, lot. We're not going to. Yeah, we're going to lower the corporate tax to 25. percent No, no. The big one that I love. This is the the greatest scam the Republicans ever come up with. Well, <laughs> it's in the top 100 of their scams. Yeah. Um, are you afraid that when you die, your heirs will be hit with the death tax? Yes. The... Are you Are you afraid of that? No. Why are you not afraid of that? I don't have a lot of money. Hey, guess what? That's right. Yeah. And you the know. people who do have a lot of money, again, that's yeah. all it is about. Exactly. When I die, even if I do uh, do beyond my wildest dreams, I will not have enough money to trigger the estate tax. Yeah. I don't have an estate. I got some stuff. Yeah. You know, there's no estate involved. Right. And, and that's most of the country. I think it's a, a, under five million. I think I, I believe that's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and say most Americans. I'm, I'm willing to say ninety eight percent of Americans don't even have five million in, in any accumulation of assets, assets, cash, whatever. Yeah, two percent do. Of that, then there's other rules that means that so few people actually pay quote unquote the estate tax. But it's such a high dollar amount mm -hmm. that to offset the loss to the treasury by repealing that tax, um, you got to cut benefits. You got to raise rates on other people. I'm like, um, why are we transferring wealth from the non-rich to the rich? I mean, we're doing it now. This would put it on steroids yeah. for a few wealthy families. So, hey, one of the 10.5 trillion reasons why I will eat a bullet before I vote Republican anybody. Yeah, ever. That's, you know, sorry. I I wish I had more than one choice because sometimes the Democrats. It's like, yeah, I'm not a fan of them either. Uh, but I'm also realistic. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry for people that were, you know, we're going to vote for Jill Stein. Well, yeah, in a couple of states, you put Trump over the top and now he's president. So... Believe me, I would love there to be a credible third party movement. Third, but, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Just like, but we don't have that now. We don't we have, don't that. have it. I don't know how we're ever going to get it. That's the problem. It's such a, the two are such behemoths that like <sighs> there's, I don't see a way to actually have a viable third candidate. I mean the the libertarian the libertarians it, are slowly making oh, ground. Uh, even yeah, though but they, but but they're just another shade of Republican. Kinda no, they're kind of wacky. Well, that, they're they're kind there of there shouldn't nutty. be the there shouldn't be the um, what is it the uh, the and, DMV like so you think people shouldn't have driver's licenses? Well, no, you should, like, oh, just and I, let's not get into drill down in every <laughs> platform. But yes, I, but mean, I mean they're the first ones making a making a mark on the map of of a third right. party. You know the Green Party's been around since the '60s. They've done nothing. You know, bunch of tree hugging hippies. Yeah, exactly. If you can distill down a party into a dismissive slogan, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. Right, right or wrong, right or wrong. Yeah, you know. So well, Rand Paul out of what Kentucky, he's quote unquote a libertarian. Okay. I mean, he's not. I mean, he's a Republican, but he espouses libertarian ideals and calls himself a libertarian, yeah. a libertarian, yeah, as opposed to a member of the Libertarian Party. Yeah, I mean, I heard some interviews with Gary Johnson, and he, oh, that guy. Well, he had some really good ideas, and he had some really good. Uh, things he was kind of nutty and he said some really dumb shit on the See, campaign trail. That's the problem. You've got somebody who may be. Let's say you an economist runs, and he will he has got the economy down on lock. Mm -hmm. He's got it. Doesn't know shit about anything else, and can't delegate. Yeah, 
or you have the case of Trump, who doesn't know shit about anything, yeah, anything and can't delegate, won't delegate. And when he does delegate, he gets in people that are just as ill-informed and ill-prepared as he is. Mm -hmm. You know, Rick Perry comes out of Texas. Well, let's make him the energy secretary. What? You mean I have to deal with a nuclear as well as oil? No, right. You know, hey, you hate the environment? Let's go ahead and... Actually, we just lost. Um, who do we just lose? Tom, Tom Price, Price, yeah, out of Georgia. Yeah. He was the Health and Human Services uh, guy who has done more than Trump even to damage Obamacare. Yeah, I'm waiting to find out. We're about what a week or so away from uh, November first. November, 1st? no, November first. No, is it October first? November first. It's either October or no. I can't. Yeah, it's one of those where open enrollment starts. Yeah, and um, I'm bracing for the rate increases. Not because, you know, Obamacare is failing. It's because the insurers are going, crap, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what to do. We're, get, we're going to have to, ra you know. Not only, and not only have they, the Republicans cut all the advertising budget to that. 90% of it. And they're also. They're also taking it down on the weekends. Yep. For, for, for maintenance. Yeah. For maintenance. Yeah. On the weekends when most people. Right. Have the time to right. sign up. Well, that's like having, uh, you know. Having uh, voting always happen during the work day. Well, it's open at seven and you know seven to seven. Yeah. So you have to rush there with everybody else before on a, you on have a to... fucking Tuesday. I... <laughs> I say keep it on. If you have to keep it on Tuesday, then voting day is a national holiday. If not, put it to Saturday. We're not horse and buggy anyway. Right. You know. Well, here's the thing about the um, the. Obamacare. I mean, it was a mess. I mean, I I used it for a couple of years and it was kind of a mess, but it was a necessary mess. It needs to be fixed for sure. It oh, needs yeah. to be repaired and it needs to be fine tuned and it needs to work, but well, just I'm, killing I'm, the whole thing. Well, I'm sorry, Dan. The uh I have a headlight out on my car. It's a nice new car, but headlights out, so I'm going to go ahead and drive it off a cliff and try to get another one. Right. Because I'd rather do that than, you know, take the time. Well, because that was to, somebody to... else's car. who exactly. Some other guy built exactly. that car. And, and I hate that And car. I hate that guy. Hey, hate that car. Yeah. Why do I have that car? Yeah. That car is saving your life. I don't care. I'm going to kill right, it anyway. Right. You know, just the just the, the preconceived, uh, uh, not preconceived notions, that's a whole different thing. The uh, pre-existing conditions clause was so necessary of course, in this country, that you know that that they're trying to kill that. Just I don't understand why people can be. No, no, they're not killing it. They're allowing insurers. Oh, this is the Graham Cassidy thing, not Obamacare. Yeah, you know, they're allowing insurers to do it or not do it, or leave it to the states to decide. They're big on states' rights, unless the states decide a way that they don't like, and yeah. then it needs to be a federal. Right. You know, if a state decides to be, uh, you know, nicer to immigrants, well, then then the states are wrong we need to yeah. intercede or if they want to legalize marijuana oh no no states rights there you know abortion nope sorry you don't go the way we want we got to get it you know right it's hypocrisy that's all it is it's absolute hypocrisy either you've got freedom either you don't you got states rights or you don't you know and i'm we're living in i'd say maybe a tinge of purple just because of atlanta but georgia it's pretty red. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's pretty darn red. There yeah. was some talk of maybe, possibly, Hillary could have carried. She did Jared well, but... Did better. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's 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 incremental steps. Now, in the midterms in the next presidential election, because of Trump, I think there's going to be a lot of places in play that never were in play before. Because even people that are hardcore Republican, either they're going to stay home or might deign to vote Democrat just to voice their disapproval of this, you know, this... Mm, we will see. This ambulatory phlegm globule we have. Uh, <laughs> now, I've got... I, you know, Stephen Colbert goes, you know, this guy, and then has a joke about him, you yeah. know, Dan Bauman and, and walking beard support system, right. you know? Yeah. And I've got a million of them for Trump. <laughs> and... And, of course, now the Trump administration is trying to uh, get the names and profile information for people who are uh, anti-Trump on Facebook. And Facebook, thankfully, uh, is fighting against that. As releasing well, they that. should. Well, yeah. I mean, did any of them commit a crime against Trump or, or Trump or threaten Trump? No. I mean, 
I hate the man more than I ever thought I could hate another human being. I make absolutely no no statement that I plan to harm him or any no, member of, of his family. Not. Because that's not how I roll. Yeah. You know? Well, that's we're reasonable, law-abiding citizens, and we can hate people without wanting to kill them. <laughs> yes, ex- exactly. A difference of opinion is not enough for me to want to murder somebody. Right. You know? Now, if they have a difference of opinion and they're sassing off to me, then I'm cutting their fucking throats. <laughs> <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> Puts knife away. <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, everything is so polarized, and I don't know. Say something. I'm my head is. Uh. <laughs> and of course, now very, uh, very cognizant that Trump is of how uh, how um, uh, Bush was denigrated for his, shall we say, lackluster response <laughs> uh, to Katrina. Yeah. Now we've got um, Puerto Rico. Yeah, now we've got Puerto and Rico. Mexico. But but Puerto Rico is in the in the news right now because of what I'm about to talk about. But let's not forget, Houston still has problems. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just you know pump out some water and everything's okay. But you know, there's a lot of Latinos there, so maybe eh, yeah. you know. And uh, Florida probably not uh, not doing too well, not as not as bad as Houston. Yep. And there's other, you know, the U.S. Virgin Islands. What's the operative word in there, Dan? <laughs> U.S. Yeah. It, it's us, Puerto yeah. Rico. It's not some place that we're responsible for. They're U.S. citizens. They are us. Yeah. And Trump's, uh, you know. <sighs> but I mean, it's a it's a very big ocean. It's a oh, it's, it's a such big, a big ocean. It's a big ocean, a lot of big water. I'm a boat captain. I'm a boat captain. <laughs> do, do, do. He gets behind the truck. Toot toot. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna get on the boat. Uh, yeah. And oh, there's 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 a lot of information about um, the Jones Act, which uh, when you go when you transport goods between two U.S. ports, it has to be a U.S. ship with a U.S. crew. Right. He is holding off on on waving that and then he waved it a little bit but there's so much financial and corporate interest behind that because it's a money maker for him they don't want to relax the jones act when there's other countries that are what they're dying to help out you know they'll pick up goods from the u.s and they'll take them right to puerto rico like nope you're not u.s ships yeah and now he's complaining that um, uh, the mayor of uh, San Juan is bitching and moaning about their, that people are dying and you're not doing enough for yourself. You're not helping out. And, and you know, you guys have a lot of financial problems. Like, I'm sorry. There's a reason why doctors don't uh, ask you about your fucking insurance when you come in on a gurney with a sucking chest wound. Yeah. They take care of you, and then they worry about the bill yeah, later. we'll do the paperwork later. Exactly. You know, if, if triage included, you know, a credit report, people are going to die. Yeah. There's a reason why, you know, it's the same for here. People are without, you know, you think, well, they've... You know, they've got water. No, they don't. Food, no. Gasoline, no. No, they don't have stuff. Yeah. You know, they were wiped clean by the hand of, you know, the hand of God. Well, Mother Nature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> global warming. No, no, not going <laughs> no, there. No, that's not, not going thing. there. No, no, no. And, and now he's he's bringing up the debt. He's he's picking a fight with, uh, uh, with the mayor of San Juan. It's kind of like how the back and forth between the Bush administration and Ray Nagin with New Orleans. Yeah. Now, Ray Nagin was kind of a, a douchebag. Yeah. But because he was the other party, well, then, we've got to, we've got to you know, demonize this person. Yeah. And once again, we have Trump being against the interests of people that are not white. Yeah. Coincidence? You know what? It could be. It very well could be. It could be. Personally, I think not. Yeah, I don't think it is. You yeah, know, hard to swallow that. Uh, well, you know, if if I was on the fence, his comments about Charlottesville, Charlotte, Char- Charlottesville, no, Char- Charlottesville, yeah. um, uh, put me over. You know, put me over on the side of you know racist motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, we've got uh, we've got more hurricanes coming. 
Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, just, you know. Well, yeah. Anecdotal, well, not anecdotally, but um, based on history. Yes. You know, it's not like, well, we got a couple here and now we're done for hurricane season. Right. Which I think doesn't end until March. Is it March? No, yeah. February or March? And with the waters being as warm as they are because global warming is a total hoax, um, there are going to be more category fours and fives rather yep. than ones and twos. Mm-hmm. So, so with that in mind, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the system for naming hurricanes, Yeah, you know, it's, I think it's a male, female, and they go, you know, through yeah. the alphabet, whatever. You'll never guess the name of the upcoming, uh, you know, the next, the next storm that happens, uh, what? you know, it hasn't formed yet, but when it does, guess what it's going to be named? Uh, what? <laughs> it's going to be called medication time, medication time. Now nah, we ran out of time. I will tell you next week. The Nine Billion Names of Pod was conceived, written, and performed by Michael Reed and Dan Bauman with Abdul Benny Hassan as the sound of splintering wood. Research, transportation, and exasperated looks by Courtney Loner. Technical assistance by Cubase, Pro Tools, Skynet, QLab, Deep Thought, Big Brother, and Eddie, our shipboard computer. Financial consideration provided by the Wayne Foundation, Stark Industries, the Piranha Brothers, and LexCorp. Legal counsel by the offices Howard, Howard, and Fine. Next week, nerd stuff. We promise. <laughs> we promise. Our intro music was written by Tim Akers. This podcast was sponsored by Deep Shag Records and is a production of Audio Prime. Throw us a couple stars on iTunes, why don't you? Listen, watch on YouTube, listen on SoundCloud, stream us on Stitcher, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us, comlink at billionpod.com. Until this happens again, I'm Dan Bowman. I'm Michael Reed. Hello, Z. Audio Primate.